I hope you enjoyed the film, uh, Rubble Kings. I think it's a real nice out of all the films about the uh, 60s and 70s New York gangs and the, and the Boogie Down Bronx. I think it's probably one of the, the strongest in terms of tying us in with hip hop culture and music, which they really do nicely at the end. Um, you know, I think, you know, one of the main things too to kind of, you know, um, look at is the role of the centrality of music, music um, in these social movements, because <clears throat> as we'll kind of look at in so many ways, hip hop itself is an actual social mu movement. Uh, the gang culture was a social movement. And you really see that so, you know, on the on the front with with the Ghetto Brothers, where also they're a band, also they play you know, music about liberation, about freedom, about justice, about equity. Um, and, and whereas this may not be like primary, it may not be like necessarily the goal of, of hip hop music. It's, you know, because of all the things that we've, we've talked about in New York City, the politics of neglect, institutional uh, racism, uh, classism, you know, all that uh, during that era, you know, Hip hop is very much a social movement in because it's in response to all those things. It's a it's a reaction to all those things, although not necessarily explicitly um, being political in and of itself. But you do see that you know obviously music is central uh, to both these movements. So some things to just think about as we move from gangs to to hip hop culture. And I hope you saw this in the film. Um, you know, we see gang leaders, gang members, um, specifically Africa Bambata, who's one of the pioneers of, of hip hop music and culture, you know, become these gang leaders, you know, warlords, etc. Uh, members of the gangs become hip hop heads. They become leaders in hip hop. Uh, they become practitioners, you know, and they kind of state it in the film. It's like, they start to develop a different type of style, like where actually their style was about being fresh, was about being dope, was about about being unique, and was also about getting girls. You know, was a was a major a major thing, which I think is often left out of, you know, the story of hip hop is is a lot about that because it was started mostly by young boys. I mean, teenage boys, um, children essentially. You know, um, but I think you know. One of the common myth, myths that spread when you talk to hip hop historians or, or a lot of people, you know, heads, whatever, is that like hip hop starts and like gang stuff stop, stops, you know. It, it didn't necessarily work like that, but like in many ways, like the time that you put into your gang or your family, you know, into those activities, it got in many ways replaced with hip hop, like you, you become a dancer, a writer, um, you know, try to become a DJ, um, or you go to the DJ's parties, and that kind of became the main thing. So a lot of people stayed in gangs, gangs stayed active, they weren't as prominent, um, you know, but, you know, the gang members went to these hip hop parties, because again, they were young, you know, teenagers, and so they went to these these parties. So so um, that's where, you know, the gangs ended up in so many ways, but they weren't in like, like a lot of the, the turf concepts and colors and all that stuff started to, to wane and wane, uh, wane in terms of importance. So a lot of the early hip hop jams, which we'll talk about, um, you know, later today um, or in our next unit uh, is, is, you know, that these jams, these parties that these hip hop DJs were throwing were about nonviolence. You know, they'd stop playing the music if a fight broke out, stuff like that. Um, I think one of the main things too, you know, that's major in hip hop and major in gangs, like this is a similarity, is the appropriation. Appropriation of symbols, of iconography, of texts from like society, right? and undermining their their meaning giving them new meanings wearing your wearing your shoes different wearing your 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 jacket different you know um you know hip-hop like really gravitated towards adidas and at the time adidas was like a boutique german conservative german uh athletics you know apparel company and so you know it was a that 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 brand was appropriated into hip hop and they rearticulated the meanings of those of those products 
Um, you know, gangs did the same thing. They rearticulated symbols and iconography, war, war iconography, um, etc. So there is an element of appropriation. Um, you know, a big thing in, in both, both gang and hip hop culture is going to be, um, you know, um, expressing oneself through style and style as a mark of, of, of individuality. Okay. Uh, crews, you know, uh, hip hop crews, DJ crews, um, you know, this directly piggybacks off of the concept of gangs and families, you know, having a crew, having a turf based crew, you know, all the major hip hop uh, DJs had their own blocks or neighborhoods that they more or less controlled um, or areas that they more or less that was like where they played um, you know so there was you know that that element you know where people represented um, you know certain um, areas so to speak and crews of DJs and MCs within those areas um, you know obviously graffiti um, you know, graffiti predates hip hop, um, you know, in so many ways, but, the, you know, came, uh, came out of the mid sixties, mid late sixties, 1967. I think this dude cornbread in Philadelphia started writing his name all over places in Philly. Um, you know, and that, that kind of caught on and that, and graffiti, as we kind of know, it got brought into hip hop and then hip hop culture sort of magnified it in its own in its own way but like graffiti's been a part of punk and other types of you know you know subcultures um you know that 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 write write their names in aerosol um but also dance so some of the the dance you know um elements as we'll talk about with the apache line and top rock and also come from uh gang culture the feeling of empowerment social you know power empowerment um you know, having power, you know, again, we're talking about, you know, a bunch of young people who, who were abandoned by society, you know, felt, uh, you know, like they lacked power, like they lacked voice. And through gang culture and through hip hop culture, they became empowered. It made them feel like they had, like they had um, worth and they had value in, in society. Um, as a way of getting fame, of being known, um, and that was a major major thing, is like getting getting known, being famous for being, you know, the most ruth most ruthless gangster, or like the DJ with the dopest breaks, you know. Um, and then obviously the the last one of the last continuities is the element of social justice, community building, etc. Um, you know that maybe we're not like necessarily everybody not all gangs and not all hip-hop crews and djs were like the ghetto brothers where they had that as like a platform you know but in so many ways what people did was they were creating community they were helping to build uh build a community with a shared set of values um etc et um and and ultimately you know as much as as many 14 15 16 year old kids can you know there there is definitely um, you know, an element of social justice to what they were doing. Maybe not activism directly, um, but definitely a, a way of, of, of creating equality, creating voice, of creating power, which is really important.